War Tales took a few hours before it started clicking with me, largely because I don't think any one of its tentpole features is exceptional. Its paint-by-numbers tactics combat doesn't have any interesting encounter design, and the world and characters are just nodes to be moved by sandbox RPG mechanics rather than being compelling in and of themselves. So why am I having such a good time and why do I recommend it? Because War Tales not only nails the harmony between all of its disparate mechanics, but the quiet workhorse that made it all flow for me was the simple progression through those components. It has a firm understanding of how it ticks, and manages to inundate you with choice without overwhelming you by it, and its greatest achievement is its ability to make one more hour with it appealing. War Tales creates a world of permanent conflict and depressing atmosphere. Its mud-smeared low fantasy aesthetic is a believable analog to the Middle Ages Europe it's emulating with the infusion of fantasy elements happening by virtue of plague-ridden zombies and giant pulsating rats. Just the gross infected stuff to make the lives of our peasants more miserable without giving them anything fantastical to aspire to. Because War Tales is not a world of heroes and villains. Your starting party and anyone you pick up along the way is just going to be whatever randoms you find in a tavern holding a pitchfork. The only thing on the horizon for anyone in this world is years and generations of more hard manual labor. There's no singular big bad you're fighting against or objective you have to rally a squad around. Creating a set of parameters that ensure the material conditions you maintain for your entire party are going to matter a whole lot more than the buffs and equipment you assign to any one individual character. It's also why you can bring some civilians along for the ride to ensure you're casting a wide net with the significant profession systems. Keep your troops healthy, keep them fed, equipped, repaired, and most of all, paid. Without that frequent distribution of wages, what's keeping the band together? It's a systems balancing act and one that's very fun to take part in, especially once you start to ease some of those burdens the more upgrades you acquire. The diegetic progression of your caravan will give you upgraded cooking potency, makeshift hospitals to tend to your wounded, and strategy tables where senior party members can be assigned and grant you buffs for combat. But I think the real star of the show and what unifies these together so well is the game's more abstract progression layers. Nearly everything you do in War Tales feeds you knowledge points and also moves meters along a few different genres of progression style. You can cash these points in for very handy rewards, like the ability to sprint in the overworld or increased move speed while you stick to roads. What elevates this beyond being an obvious carrot on a stick is the fact that it's also your safety net. These upgrades are both permanent and party-wide, which gives you reasons to not just restart your save the second the going gets tough, even if you found yourself on the unfavorable side of the game's permadeath mechanics. Death of your party members being irreversible is a function regardless of your difficulty setting, which is all the more reason to go wide instead of narrow when it comes to making important progression decisions. Those decisions can start to get a little fiddly as your caravan balloons in size, though. After the 12 hour mark, you'll usually be juggling both your immediate party members, multiple horses, tradesfolk, and sometimes an escort or two as well. It starts to become more strategy than it does strategy RPG, and the UI doesn't always keep up when it comes to easily ensuring all those members are productive, happy, and equipped, but the rewards for staying on top of everyone's needs are well worth it. War Tales lives confidently in the sandbox RPG territory because of the philosophies it has towards how you can move through the world. There's many rivers to one ocean, sometimes even many oceans, because the world of War Tales is divided up into about half a dozen regions, the borders of which either demand a pass or cash payment to a customs official. The closest thing War Tales has to a story is the sort of intra-region conflicts that act as a scaffolding to all of your activities within a region. They're visualized by a meter on the top left, and most of the major quests you do in an area will push that meter further towards completion, the ultimate goal of which is a capstone quest that demands you make a lasting region-impacting choice. I kind of like this system for what it is. It's by no means a true substitute where a story would be in a more conventional non-sandbox RPG, but here it serves an auxiliary purpose of giving you some sort of measure to determine when you've completed a region, outside of checking literally every box. I think where I was less amenable to the loss of authorship that comes by virtue of a game with this much freedom is in the combat and combat arenas. Every encounter starts to blend together. The different regions dress up the spaces with varied textures, but can't escape the fact that the combat system just isn't interesting enough to survive the lack of curated encounter design. Which isn't to say that it's bad, it's just a little dull. 
You alternate with your opponents moving your units along a flat grid with backstab and surrounding bonuses that encourage isolating and executing individual units one by one. You do have a lot of choice in terms of turn and unit order. There's no speed stat that governs when your units should be striking, with the game instead giving you slots within which you can select whatever unit hasn't already moved that turn. It's a feature that gives you both a ton of flexibility and also reinforces the game's it takes a village themes, but it doesn't really feel that way until your characters have become meaningfully different from each other, which takes a while. Character progression, like many aspects of War Tales, is a slow burn, so until you get the actives and passives at the end of the skill tree, your characters just don't feel very unique, and neither do your enemies. With some exception, you'll be butting heads against the same types of mercenaries and bandits all the way through. It's why the few times the game does experiment with more curated combat scenarios are the most memorable, a personal favorite of mine being the gladiator-style arena, both because of the crowd demands that will have you deviating from your reliable strategies, and because enemy placement, both human and animal, follows some more consistent rules, rather than just being semi-randomly spattered on a grid. Even at its apex, you'd never confuse it for a dedicated turn-based strategy game, which is fine in principle when you consider this is just one of War Tales' mechanics, but it's a frequent mechanic. One that's no doubt supposed to be load-bearing, but it's just a little too bland and a little too forgettable to be as omnipresent as it is. Once my party size neared or even exceeded the double digits, these fights would start to crawl on, and my mind would slowly wander back to the parts of the game that I did love, which, funny enough, was the wandering, and also the fight preparedness that comes with it. War Tales is no doubt going to be compared to the Witcher series for a lot of reasons. Tonally, it hits a lot of the same beats with its impoverished and depressing medieval countryside, its emphasis is more intimately focused on the subjects rather than those doing the subjecting, and even the soundtrack sounds like The Witcher from the right angles. But I think a mechanical parallel that can be drawn between both series are their focus on pre-fight rituals, rather than just the fights themselves. War Tales lacks the sort of fight specificness that Witcher has with its species-centric oils, but it makes up for that with its breadth. Well-fed bonuses, extra armor plating, weapon oils, and more make up a huge invisible pre-fight checklist you can choose to take full advantage of. It's an optimizer's paradise, with most of the decisions happening well before the first sword swing and usually before you even know what the battlefield is. And the developers clearly know this and smartly reward your exploration in these ways. Find yourself in a weird corner of the map or an idyllic mountain peak and there will surely be something tangible as a present. It helps give War Tales a reason to poke into every nook and cranny you can find, and it also keeps it enjoyable even when all else isn't going your way. Because War Tales isn't always an exceptional game, but it is always an enjoyable one. It has wheat for its chaff, and despite the fact that its combat and region stories will lose your interest before your time with it ends, it manages to be greater than the sum of its parts, with compelling short and long-term progression, meaningful pre-combat strategies you can lose yourself in, and even the pockets of physical beauty that manage to peek through its bleak world as you wander through it. Once you've ventured through a region or two, you'll have a good idea of what to expect from the rest of your time with it. But War Tales owns this simple predictability by letting you conquer the balancing act of its systems and the needs of your caravan. What it lacks in surprises and standout features, it compensates for by being made of hardy stock. 